In Act 1 of The Cherry Orchard, Gaev talks too much, the friends continue to visit and Pishik asks for money to pay his debts, but Varya answers with alarm that they have nothing at all. Lubov Andreevna gazes at the orchard and expresses both joy and despair as she reminisces about it. She thinks she sees her dead mother walking in the orchard, but she realizes it's just her imagination. Trofimov, a dear family friend, eternal student, and former tutor of Lubov Andreevna's dead young son, arrives to see the family. They all look in amazement at how old he looks. He and Lubov Andreevna are overcome with emotion, and Pishik keeps asking for a loan. Anya and Varya are anxious about the financial strain on the estate and the imminent loss of their home. Gaev makes plans to borrow money, possibly from a wealthy great aunt. Trofimov reveals tender feelings for Anya as the first act ends. With Trofimov's entrance, all the key people in Lubov Andreevna's life have now appeared on the scene. He, too, is part of her past. She's fond of him, but he reminds her of her dead son and the dilemmas she now faces. Like the cherry orchard, Trofimov represents how the past is conflicted, filled with good memories, but also tragedies that people long to forget. The cherry orchard is now positioned as the center of the characters' lives, past, present, and future. Even characters that love it dearly, such as Lubov Andreevna, struggle with competing feelings about it. This, in turn, signals their struggle with the shifting change of statuses. The fact that Pishik is another landowner begging for money provides additional evidence that the aristocracy is fading. Gaev's inability to stop his inconsequential babbling suggests his plans to raise money to save the orchard will lead to nothing. He's all talk, but no action. Earlier, he rattled on about a hundred-year-old bookcase, romanticizing it as the noble symbol of an aristocratic way of life, but that lifestyle is on the way out. He admits that his speech about the bookcase was stupid, and he shouldn't talk so much. But this doesn't stop Gaia from blurting soon after that, It is not for nothing that the peasant loves me. An unlikely scenario, given how social status has shifted against aristocratic landowners. Like his sister, Gaia is trying too hard to hold on to the past in the face of unstoppable change.